All right, you're gonna hear Greg talk about um, how they decide on the big new features. So when something big like video conferencing is now coming on strong in Facebook, how do they decide to do that kind of stuff? What, what, are, the, what are the constraints? And you'll hear him talk about a number of different things about how they decide. First of all, what's possible? Um, what's, you know, what could we do? What's within our technological constraints? If things change and video conferencing is now well supported in most people's browsers and so we can do that, for example. And frankly, for any commercial organization, and Facebook is a commercial organization, what's going to make them money? What's going to, what's going to be able to forward their economic aims? What's going to be able to entice you to click on their advertisements, for example, which is a big way that Facebook makes money? What's natural given the mission of the, of the, of the company? Facebook is all around connecting people, and you'll see Greg say that, well, it's obvious that we want to do video conferencing because that's a big way to connect people, and that's something that they're going to expect, and that's a logical extension of our mission, a logical extension of the things that we want to do. And then finally, what's cool? There are people at Facebook all the time saying, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if dot, 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 right? Never underestimate the power of cool in deciding what a new, what a, what a new um, application will do. So you'll see Greg say that, that we have lots of people here at Facebook all um, testing and staying a couple of years ahead of other people and figuring out what's cool, what's going to be the next big thing. They are their own audience and so they're trying to figure out as best as possible from their own use of their application what it should do next. What would cause you to, to, to add a new big feature to Facebook? Well, Basically, you had vid you're, you're starting to do video chat, and yeah. what, what triggers that, that large scale of a change? Absolutely. So, I mean, we really are, are trying to make the site as compelling and engaging as we can for our users. Um, sometimes that means listening to the users and trying to understand exactly what it is that people are most asking for and trying to make that stuff great. Um, you know, we, we spend a lot of energy trying to make the site more reliable, make the site faster. Those are things that we know that users are going to appreciate, even though they're not necessarily always asking for it. Um, there's also um, just, just opportunities given changes in the way hardware and the way networking infrastructure is and so forth. Video chat has gotten more and more cost effective over the years mm -hmm. and it's something that you know, the, given our fundamental mission is about sharing and helping uh, people connect and, and, and bring the world closer together, video chat just seems like a very natural extension of that mission. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's not, not much better than face-to-face -face communication. And if you can't sure. be there together in person, then being able to do it over distance with, uh, with technology bridging that gap, gap is a wonderful addition to what we're trying to do. Right. Um, uh, you know, and, and some of these things are influenced by um, just the design of, you know, solving problems that we see happening because we as Facebook employees are using the site in a way that's kind of a couple years ahead of the way that the, mm -hmm. the public at large is using things. Mm -hmm. So maybe we notice that, wow, when you have a thousand friends, your news feed gets very noisy and there's lots of stuff going on. So, so we're constantly experimenting with different ranking algorithms to, to that, that may... Um, 